Question 1. How does caffeine affect plant growth? Answer. Minerals like potassium are often found alongside caffeine when it occurs in plant sources like coffee beans, and that could help the plant grow faster. However, the caffeine itself would be unlikely to have any effect on the plant's rate of growth. I tested it and the plant grew at normal rate but the leaves were more wrinkly and browner. Question 2. How do you determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar? Answer. A polar molecule is a molecule that has a net dipole moment due to its having unsymmetrical polar bonds. Two factors go into determining if a molecule is a polar. To determine if a molecule or ion is polar or nonpolar, you must determine both factors, the polarity of the individual bonds in the molecule, the shape or geometry of the molecule. Question 3. What is the difference between xylem and phloem? Answer. Both xylem and phloem are vascular tissues found in a plant. Xylem is a tubular structure, which is responsible for water transport from the roots towards all of the parts of the plant. Phloem is also a tubular structure, which, on the other hand, is responsible for the transportation of food and other nutrients needed by plant. Question 4. What is a characteristic feature of a carrier protein in a plasma membrane? Answer. Carrier proteins are globular proteins which are specific in their action and thus regulate the entry and exit of particles into the cell. They help in the conduction of ionic substances and polar substances. Question 5. What are living and non-living reservoirs? Answer. Viruses are both living as well as non-living. They have reservoirs of genes. A single nucleotide is a unit of gene. Viral genes make use of host raw material including elements to synthesize organic molecules or macromolecules. Subsequently, viruses replicate themselves thereby reproduce within the living cells. On crystallization, they become non-living and can stay in this state for years until they enter again into a living host to multiply. Certain plant viruses are transmitted to the progeny through seeds. Viruses evolve as any other living being. Therefore, now virus names are written in italics like binomial, trinomial names similar to scientific name of any other other living organism i.e. tobacco mosaic virus. Question 6. What are analogies for centriole? Answer. A centriole is like a straw because they both are tubes that let things get from one end to the other end. The centriole has a round look to it because it is made from nine triplets of microtubules that make a straw-like look. Question 7. Why do organisms live in certain places? Answer. Think of that. The temperature difference in the desert is huge. So in order to survive, the cactus plant reduces heat gain and heat loss as well as water loss. Question 8. Who created the two-part naming system used in biology? Answer. The scientific naming system that is used worldwide today was first devised by Swedish naturalist Carl Linnaeus in 1737. He proposed a two-part naming system, which classifies every living organism with a string of Latin and Greek identifiers. Full names are devised starting with kingdom and extending downward through phylum, subphylum, class, order, family, genus and species. The two-part name, or binomial name, consists of the genus and species of the organism and used to prevent the confusion that may arise with common names. Question 9. How does the odor of flower petals help pollination? Answer. The purpose of the perfume is to attract a pollinator, insect, bat, bird or whatever. The reward for the pollinator is a meal of nectar, which is produced by the flower. Question 10. What is an analogy for microtubules? Answer. Microtubules have two main functions in cells and in doing so act like a skeleton as well as like railroad tracks. Microtubules are the main structural component of the cytoskeleton in cells, which provides the cell with structure and rigidity and determines the shape of the cell. They also serve to transport vesicles and proteins within the cytoplasm through transport proteins called kinesins and dynins, which act much like railroad cars.